Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. So today we're back in the shop, working on the 3B, and I'm gonna show y'all how to put a brand new grill welt on your old Willys Jeep. I'm gonna guess that your grill welt is pretty low on the list of things that you plan on changing or fixing on your Jeep, but I think it's important to kinda, you know, just keep some squeaks down and stuff. Now, if your Jeep is like my Jeep, my grill welt has just evaporated. It's turned to powder, it's gone. You can still see all the rivets in the top of the grill, but the welt has completely disappeared. So I bought a brand new one from Quarter Ton Military. Matt is a really cool dude. I have bought tons of parts from him. I'll link it down below in the description if you wanna buy one of these. I believe he's got them for military all the way through like the CJ5 civilian models. So you have to go check it out. He's got a great store. So to start this job, you're gonna need a custom tool to install these new rivets. All right, so here's the tool I whipped up to install these new little split rivets. These are what hold your grill welt on, and you gotta kind of flare them out, and that's what this tool's for. So this is just like a Harbor Freight pair of vice grips, and then I made this little block, and see, it's like a V, but it's also kind of radius at the bottom there. I just did this with a cutoff wheel real quick. I flattened all the teeth out of this top piece right here. And then I made this little block and just tacked it on. But the whole ideal is to crush that rivet and at the same time flare it out and it'll hold that new welt on good and tight. So this is what's supplied in the kit. You get a bunch of new rivets and then this is your actual grill welt. It's kind of a rope canvas type material. It's pretty stiff. So you're gonna need that custom tool I showed you over there to do this. Also, you're gonna need an awl to punch your little holes inside of this. You don't really wanna cut it, I don't think. You just wanna open up places to put these rivets. Okay, so first step in this installation, I've gotta get rid of all these old split rivets. So we're gonna start there. I don't know if you can see that down in there, but that's what I'm talking about, these little split rivets. So the legs actually fold out and then kind of banana peel over. They kind of swoop over and that's what those radiuses are gonna do but that's what keeps your grill welt pulled tight up against the grill of the Jeep. You can see a little bit of it left there, but that just gives you an idea of what I'm removing and what I'm installing. All right, that wasn't too bad. Here's all the old rivets. You can see they were in pretty bad shape anyways. The best way it looked like to get them out is if you can just kind of pry up on them just a little bit, enough that them little legs start bending, then you can get under there with the needle nose and it'll just pop right out. So now that we got all those out, we got this ready to go. I'm gonna start in the middle, we'll lay the new grill welt out, and then I'll show you how this all gets installed. I've got my new grill welt laid out across the grill now I'm gonna start in the middle and work my way out and that way you can pull all the slack from the middle out. I've got my ends right where they need to be. Really take your time, make sure you get this in the dead center because if not, one of your ends is gonna end up too short and the other will be too long. So this is where you're gonna use your all at. You're gonna find this center rivet hole and you're gonna use this to work out a hole in your new welt. You don't wanna cut this or drill into it because it'll come unfrayed over time. You really need one of these awls or maybe just cut off an old screwdriver and sharpen it up. That might be what this is. But you're gonna work a new hole right there and that's where you put your first rivet. That'll hold this in place and then we'll just do all the next ones. Now we take one of these split rivets. We'll put it in this hole that we just made with our awl. And then this is what's important about making a tool similar to this, because we want to push down on the top of that while we flare the bottom out. That's going to pull this nice and snug up against the grill. The first one is going to be a little different because you got that low spot and this bracket. Kind of went back and forth with a screwdriver my needle nose and that tool I made. But I finally got that one in, so now 
I've got the dead center of this grill welt placed. So now I'm just gonna keep going down through here with the awl. You wanna stretch it and put the rivet in. All right, so to kind of show y'all my technique, so you're gonna stretch it. Every time you do one of these, you're gonna stretch it. That way you're gonna make sure you have enough down here at the end. You have to trim some off, that's better than coming up too short. So once you take your awl and you punch your hole, you're gonna stick that rivet in. And once you've got that rivet in, don't worry about the direction so much yet, but I took my screwdriver and kind of flared it. Then I'm gonna take my needle nose and I'm gonna pull on it while I flare it back and then we'll finish it off with that homemade tool. And that's gonna, see how that pulled it in while it smushed it down? So now that's nice and tight, I ain't going anywhere. And we'll just keep going down through here. Boy, now look at that. This grill is completely restored. Better than factory. That might be a little bit of a stretch, but to me, this thing has never looked better. I'm really happy with how this turned out. All the rivets are good and tight. The grill welt is good and tight. There is some technique. You gotta get used to using that tool. I'll be honest, I did modify it just a little bit as I was going down through here. I think I had that peak just a little bit too tall. And you gotta get the channel locks honed in just right to the right tension. But once I got it figured out, it went super smooth. So fortunately, Matt includes a few extra of these split rivets. I don't think that's an accident. Cause like I said, it took a couple tries to really get my technique down. So since I've got some extras, I wanted to show you outside of the Jeep. This is what you kinda want your split rivet to look like. So this is the screwdriver and then getting your needle nose to get that little bend. You really want these bending back. You want them kind of radius because you don't want them to dig in to this tool. So once you get it in the tool, you're gonna clamp down. And see how that mushrooms that up? It bends it up and it gives it kind of that spring. And see, that's what I was talking about. My peak was too high and I had to grind some off of it because it wasn't letting these fold all the way up. It wasn't getting high enough. I had to grind that down just a little bit so these legs could fold up like they should, but that's gonna clamp up against the bottom of that grill and it's gonna hold that welt good and tight. I'm gonna say this is a pretty easy job. I think most people within maybe an hour could do this job. Once you do it once, once you got your technique figured out, you got your tool made and honed in, you know, this might be a 30 minute job. One thing I do wanna say about my homemade tool they actually do make like a manufactured tool that is made for these split rivets. And I'll link it down below. Kaiser Willie sells it. It's like 40 bucks though. I'm going to be honest. I might have spent 10 minutes making that homemade tool. It was a cheap pair of vice grips that barely worked. And I just cut me out a little piece of like half inch stock. And like I said, I just took a cutoff wheel. Just kind of took my time, honed it in a little bit. I, you know, kind of modified it as I went. 
But you know, for 40 bucks, I feel like you can spend 10 minutes and you can probably make one similar. I tacked mine on really good. You don't, really don't even have to do that. You don't even have to mess up a pair of channel locks, honestly. You could just make the block, stick it in there. It would be a little bit more aggravating maybe, but you know, it saves you 40 bucks. I appreciate y'all checking out this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see y'all next time.